Good evening and welcome back to another Sundown Surmisings, October 16th. We are midway already through October. It's incredible. Yeah, that's and I don't know where you live, and some of the colors are popping, you know, with the fall yeah. colors, you know, the sun's going down a lot sooner, yeah, yeah. you know, a lot of things are changing. Yeah, for California, our fall colors are the orange and the sunsets because of fires. Yes, yeah. right, that's right. Well, it's been a, it's been a wonderful um, new series we started last yes. week. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so what we decided to do is that we wanted to see the God pictures. Yes. We wanted to see where kind of those, those small I don't know, explain that first I, I guess the, the, the pictures of God that we find in the nooks and crannies of the gospel, yeah. right? Not the ones that are the big, you know, on Mount Rushmore type pictures that everybody's like, oh, the cross. It's not, I, it's not that I have anything against the cross or, or parts of the Beatitudes and things like that, but you can find Jesus anywhere. And I, yeah. I guess part of what I wanted to do is encourage people to, to look for where Jesus shows up, right? Because... Abraham didn't have a gospel. There was nothing written. Right. But he found Jesus in nature and in communion with God. And I think if we dig through this book, there's so many little places. It's like, oh, wow, I never thought about that. That a new, fresh perspective of Jesus arises. And, man, if, if nothing else, what the world needs now is Jesus. So that's what we're going to do. <laughs> you know, um, one thing I want to let you know that last week we did one of my go-to stories. Yes. Tonight we're going to one of yours. Yes. We're going to find others, but if you have one, you want a go-to story that you want us to talk about, please put that down in the, the comments so yeah. we can look at that. Yeah, so hit subscribe, uh -huh. <laughs> yep. and then write down the comments, suggestions. Right. Yeah. All right. So take us, where are we going tonight? Mark chapter 10, one of oh. my favorite two stories, okay. but it's not actually two stories. I, I think it gets treated as two, but there's something really powerful okay. that I think ties in the, in the story together. So okay, well that's awesome. So we're going to take off in the book of Mark. So come join us. If you have a paper book, a uh, yeah. Bible like we do, I'm in the New American Standard, and I believe you're using King James. I am, I am but I tend to try to paraphrase along the way. And, and PJ, I'm going to have you read Mark chapter 10. Just start at verse 17. That's where it goes. Okay. All right, and that will be at 17 to 22 is the common story that we all know. And what I'm going to show is that around that, not just around the white space around the black letters, but the space around that story okay. is where the real story happens. Wow. Okay. So we'll look forward to where we're going. So jump Mark 10, mm -hmm. 17. Here we go. And he was setting out on a journey. A man, and he being Jesus was set on a journey, a man ran up to him and knelt before him and began asking him, Good teacher, what shall I do to inherit the eternal life? Well, keep going. Yep. Okay. And Jesus said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments, and lists them, Do not murder, do not commit adultery, do not steal, do not bear false witness, do not defraud, and honor your father and your mother. And he said to them, Teacher, I have kept all these things from my, from my youth and up. And looking at him, Jesus said, Oh, no, look at him. Jesus felt love for him and said to him, One thing you lack, go and sell all you possess and give to the poor, and you shall have treasure in heaven. Come, follow me. But at these words, his face fell. And he went away grieved, for he was one who owned much property. Okay, now there's, the, you know, we could spend forever in just this, this part of the story, but there's, there's a lot, lot of things. Uh, one reason I, I like Mark's account of it, Mark includes the passage in the part that Matthew and Luke don't. It says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. Now he hasn't asked him anything, he hasn't told him to do anything, this guy hasn't done anything for right, Jesus. Right. Jesus just looks at somebody and loves, loves him. him right? Yeah, wow. I love that picture of Jesus. That little, little phrase, right? But the, the next thing to notice is this guy is, is eager to do, right? He's a little good teacher. What must I do? And Jesus is kind of challenging his, you know, uh, and it sounds a little strange. Why do you call me good? There's nobody good but God. And sometimes people will read that and they'll go, oh, so Jesus is not God? No. Jesus is trying to check to see if this guy thinks he's God or not. Right. Why are you calling me good? Are you calling me good because you recognize me as God? Or are you just trying to get under on my good side? And he's, he immediately paints the picture that there's nobody good but God. Right. And then he says, so what are the commandments? And this guy goes, oh, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Right? He quite literally <laughs> yeah, says, I'm, no, good. I'm good. I'm good. I got it. I got it. Right? Well, in the, in the story, too, you always kind of bring in some cultural nuggets. There's a couple things in the story oh. that culturally add to the no, there's, story. There's, there's a bunch of things. We never get this guy's name. Okay. 
Just within a common rich young ruler. Mm, yeah. Rich young ruler. Now, to be young and rich, only two things. You could have either you inherited a lot of money. Sure. Um, or you had uh, been incredibly resourceful and industrious. Now, with the Jewish culture, being wealthy was a sign God loved you. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Sure. Yeah. That was their conundrum when they got to the uh, people like the tax collectors, because those people were in fact wealthy, but they were like, "You're not. How you're you're making money off of robbing people, right?" Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So that that was a conundrum for their theology. But here's a guy who's clearly talented. Yeah. He's young. He's up and coming. He's blessed. He's smart. He's obviously of a good character, right? Good repute. I mean, even Jesus says, I, one thing you like, I, I would love that. Because yeah. I know, I know Jesus, and Jesus uh, like, well, yeah. one thing today. <laughs> or this moment. <laughs> one thing right now, <laughs> one thing tomorrow, one thing later. But, but this guy comes to me and Jesus says, you just have one thing. One thing you like. Man, one thing. I, you know, how many of us can give, but one thing, we are that close to being translated. Yeah. One thing. Yeah. And then he hears what it is, and he's like, I can't let that go. I've worked too hard for wow. for that. All right. So he also it says he comes and kneels. Right. Yes. Not gonna happen. Not. It doesn't matter if it's a, a, a rabbi or a teacher, or even something. You're not. You're not going to kneel mm -hmm. in down in the dirt. Not in your rich robes. Not in your. You just don't do that. So wow. he's clearly in a position of feeling needy. Yeah. And yet he has all the signs of wealth. Right. 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 Everybody yeah. looks at him and says, oh, he has, he's got it all together. But he knows something's not right. Right. So he's just, so it's almost a desperate because it also says that he ran. Yes, he ran. Again, another one of those, just culturally, you wouldn't happen. Now, if you often follow some of the Jesus stories, you kind of come away, and the disciples came away with the same idea that how do I fit in? Whoa. Yeah, how do I get And this guy Correct. doesn't I'm never gonna make it. So don't leave us hanging. No. Leave us, how, how, how do we include there's it? There's a there's several clues here. Jesus makes a statement in verse 23. He looks around his disciples and he says, How hard it is for those that have riches to enter the kingdom of God. In verse 24, the disciples were astonished, and the word actually is a little more it's kind of like um, if, if you do that sort of the comic where the you know the jaw drops, you know, like uh -huh. uh, you know they, the wolf, you know, ah, and they're they're like what at his word, but Jesus answered them and says to them, and this is what I want to, to catch. Verse twenty four is our clue. Okay, and the disciples were amazed at his words, but Jesus answered again and said to them, "Children, how hard is it to enter the kingdom of God?" All right, now children seems like, and again, Mark's the only one who has this. Children seems like, what, what are you, out of play? I mean, because Jesus is actually younger than Peter. Right. Jesus is younger than the oldest disciples. He's older than, than John, but he is not the oldest person there. So he's turning and calling them children. Who's he talking to? He's clearly talking to the disciples. And right. He says the disciples were like, well, then who can be? So they're asking, and Jesus calls the disciples children. And the clue in that word children is because we're then supposed to look, again, we, we now, the, the nugget story that we always hear about the rich and older who walked away, and the, and the lesson has always been, uh, you know, don't love your money too much, right? right. The love of yep. money is the root of all evil. But it's like, but that's actually not the point of the story. I will argue that the real point of the story is his question was the wrong question. Mm, okay. He asked, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus draws their mind back. He says, children. And he uses a word that they couldn't have forgotten because he had just said this a little before. Right, okay. And that's the context. So now, I kind of pulled up, quotes fast on you, we read the tail in. Let's go and read the first oh. part of this story that okay. I think will explain what is going on as well as why the guy came running after Jesus. So. Teaching the, the story of the rich young ruler without this context does it so much injustice. Okay. So, verse 13, same chapter, Mark 10. And they brought young children to him, and that he would touch them. And his disciples, mm. right, again, notice the word disciples earlier and later, disciples. So, we have disciples rebuking, and later, disciples astonished about, watch, 
rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was much displeased. And he said unto them, Let the little children come to me, mm. and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Now again, we hear, we often have this, I've heard this as a sermon, well, it means you're supposed to enter the kingdom childlike and all that. I don't think that's actually the point. Watch. Verily I say unto you, whoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he will not enter. And, and you know, I get kids will write, well, because kids are, you know, so open and patient. It's like, well, I don't know how many kids you babysat in your life, but kids <laughs> are not always like that. Yeah. <laughs> but the point is, it's an acted out parable. Okay. This is a hearkening back to Ezekiel. To, to, this is a drama. For those of you, you know, PJ uh, teaches drama, and I've taught drama in the past. This is an acted out parable. He says, whoever receives the kingdom like these children, mm -hmm. that's out. You've you got to receive it like this. And verse 16, what's he do? It says he took them in his arms and began blessing them, laying his hands upon them. Wow. So, look, visually, right? They're like, God, oh, let's keep the kids away. And he's like, no, no, no. This is how you receive the kingdom. If you want it, you want to be saved. You mm -hmm. want to make it to the kingdom. Then you need to receive it like these children. And mm -hmm. all the kids did was get close enough for Jesus to pick them up. Wow. He picked them up. He held them. He blessed them. And they received the kingdom. Wow. Right? Because wherever the king is is where the kingdom is. Right? And he's the king. And he says, this is how you receive the kingdom. Get close enough and I will pick, pick you, you up. up. Just come close enough to me and, pick, and I will pick you up. But you have to let me pick you up. Now, that's what the guy sees. Wow. That's the story. And when he was gone forth, it says, right? We read that. Right. So this guy has seen this, and he goes, I want to be saved. Because he just finished, Jesus yes. finished saying, if you want to be saved, you want to get to right. heaven, this is what you got to do. do. And he's like, okay, wait a second. What do I have to do? I've done all these other things. I've done all these other things. And Jesus is like, no, that's, you, you missed the, you, 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 need to, you need to come close enough wow. to me. For me to pick you up. And this guy was clinging so much onto his stuff that he couldn't get close enough to Jesus. Yeah. For Jesus to pick him up. And the Bible reference said he loved him. He loved him before. He, he wanted loved, to pick him he up. He wanted so to bad. pick him up so bad. I mean, to me, it's a sign of a father. And he says, just when he's talking about his children, if you look at the bookends, and I'll try to draw it as a symbol, the story about children, then he calls his disciples children. children uh -huh. And they were asking, How do I be saved? This is how you be saved. And this guy asks, How do I be saved? This guy he said, and this guy walks away, and then Jesus answers, little children, how hard it is for those to enter the kingdom right. if the, who trust in riches. And the whole, this story, this story, this story is all about entering the kingdom. Mm. This is addressed to children and how they do it successfully. These two stories are addressed to adults and how they don't do it successfully. Wow. But he calls them children, and his answer to how to receive the kingdom is simply come close enough oh, to, close to have Jesus pick you up. Pick you up. It, this story fits perfectly with what you, your favorite one last week. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But that's all, from my opinion, that's what Thomas wanted. I want to be close enough yeah, to Jesus. Picked up. Wow. Well, that's powerful. I mean, the, the, man, what a picture of God this week. And, um, you know, whatever you're at, whatever is happening in your world, um, we encourage you to get close enough for Jesus to pick you up. You might see like, a lot of obstacles your way, but just the, the, what, what a yeah. beautiful picture. And in fact, some of those obstacles, here's actually another part of the story, is that the obstacles were the people from the church. Mm. They were the disciples. And sometimes you have to get past those people, those friends, who are trying to keep you from Jesus, but don't let anything set you from that goal to get to Jesus. Let Him pick you up. He will carry you through this time of crisis. He will carry you whatever you're going to face tomorrow. He will carry you to His kingdom. Well, as we head into fall, we are so glad you continue to join us. Please do so. Again, in the comments, write down something you want us to look at. Let us know how you know what things you might be going through that we can share from God's Word as well. Reach out to us at principal at monterbaycademy.org or D. Gregory at monterbaycademy.org. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. Next week, more on Pictures of Jesus. We'll see you. Bye. Bye.